Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. Today we are going to discuss another interesting topic from the subject cosmetic evaluations that is about the measurement of trans epidermal water loss. Now again this is a very important component trans epidermal water loss and is used for the assessment of various cosmetics pertaining to the skins. In the previous video we have also discussed about the sedimeter and corneometer. Let us now try to understand the principle and functioning of the trans epidermal water loss. So before discussing the various devices which are used for the assessment of transepidermal water loss, first let us try to understand certain facts about the transepidermal water loss. What is transepidermal water loss? Actually, the transepidermal water loss is the most widely used objective measurement for assessing the barrier function of the skins in patients which are suffering from various skin problems such as atopic dermatitis. Now, you must have seen this function of the skin. The skin is actually acting as a protective function. It, it not only prevents the uh, any external surface to any uh, external uh, things to penetrate inside the body system. It is actually acting as a protective barrier, preventing the entry inside also and also letting the body fluids from inside to uh, evaporate outside also so it is acting like a barrier now uh, the, you must have heard about the corneocytes corneocytes under the skin which actually prevents the penetration which actually prevents the uh, loss of the fluids from the skin to the outer surface similarly entry is also so it is actually there is a sort of balances being preserved by the skin which actually uh, allows it to have its proper functioning now in case of certain disease like atopic dermatitis or psoriasis or like any skin disease what happens is that this imbalance get, this balance that the skin always maintains in a healthy person gets disturbed now due to this there is excess loss of the water vapors from inside excess loss of the fluids from inside our body to the outside atmosphere now when this uh, this is expressed in the in terms of a factor called transepidermal water loss. Now, what happens when this transepidermal water loss factor gets elevated due to these skin conditions? This factor can be measured and assessed and quantified from various equipments based on this factor. So, we are going to discuss in detail about the equipments which are being used. Now, you can understand this assessment of the factor that is the loss of water vapor from inside our body to the outside is very important it can hold uh, it can also uh, show you as the age advances or in the various disturbed conditions or in various disease condition this transepidermal water loss gets elevated so you can assess the parameter now actually how what is transepidermal water loss what is the principle behind it now this transepidermal water loss is the quantity of the condensed water that diffuses across a fixed area of the stratum corneum to this from the skin surface per unit time so when we assess the transepidermal water loss it is at a particular location where we are actually applying the treatment during the skin condition for the evaluation of the cosmetics we select a particular area where we actually allows now when we try to assess the quantity of the condensed water that diffuses across a fist area of the stratum corneum we are actually selecting a particular location inside the on its on the body surface and we are trying to measure the gradient in the water loss which happens uh, per unit time now the water vapor evaporating from the skin is measured using a probe like you must have seen the in the case of corneometer as well or like in sebumeter the there is a probe which is being applied to the skin and it uh, we allow it to detect uh, through either through 30 seconds or for one minute we keep it over there and then we have the reading recorded on the monitor using that software system so again same things happen in this transepidermal water loss uh, devices also there is a probe which we actually put up on the skin allow it to detect the value and this value is being calculated and displayed on the monitor now what are the parameters actually it is measuring the water vapor which is transmitting from the skin and there are various sensors and probes which are actually assessing this gradient loss now what happens when we undergo any treatment for example like for the treatment of atomic dermatitis you, you are using some cream or like or any other skin conditions then what happens they it it alters the water vapor loss 
because it is preserving it it is trying to improve the condition so this loss of water vapor is somewhat prevented since the barrier property of the skin is being improved it is being boosted up so now this variation can be recorded and you can check the efficacy of the treatment regimen in of that particular cosmetic now uh, the trans epidermal water loss can be measured using three devices basically first is the open chamber device as the name indicates it's an open chamber whereby you are actually putting your anatomical part or suppose you are putting your hand inside that and then you are measuring the loss of water vapor or like uh, you are actually uh, uh, putting up the skin part inside that and measuring that uh, trans epidermal water loss parameter or it can be unventilated chamber unventilated chamber means like it is blocked from one side it's a, it's a uh, like uh, it's a closed chamber from one side or condensed chamber device now this unventilated chamber device further got upgradation and advance whereby uh, that chamber is actually created from the closed part that we are going to discuss further in the slides now trans epidermal water loss varies significantly across different anatomical sites sites what does it mean at that at uh, the, every skin is different and different parts of our body have the different thickness of the skin so does the water loss actually is different from the different parts of our body so also it depends on the functioning of the sweat glands activity how much active is your sweat glands you must have acrine gland ap apocrine gland so how much active is in, is in during the uh, puberty phase these glands are more active like uh, which part of the uh, on what is the age of the person it also varies as per that now skin temperature conditions like uh, the per if the person is exposed to a very hot temperature or like it is if the person is at a normal temperature at a surviving at a cold so this loss also somewhat varies with the temperature conditions and corneocyte properties corneocyte properties are refers to the condition of the skin it is very dry skin or it is very moist skin or it depends on the hydration level of the skin as well so skin barrier dysfunctions results in increased trans epidermal water loss so when the functioning of the skin is disturbed due to any disease condition like atopic dermatitis or any other condition contact dermatitis then what happens due to this imbalance cause loss of the fluids happens more from inside our body to the outside atmosphere this loss of the fluid results in the increased or elevated trans epidermal water loss now skin disease in which the skin barrier is disturbed such as atomic dermatitis contact dermatitis psoriasis eschatosis are associated with elevated or we can say elevated or increased trans epidermal water loss now trans epidermal water measurement loss measurements consistently correlate with the percutaneous absorption of topically applied product now it is also related with the percutaneous absorption of the whatever product is being applied since it why we are studying the trans epidermal loss because we want to understand the efficacy of any cosmetic evaluation we want to do the evaluation of any cosmetic product we will be assessing this uh, parameter regularly at frequent interval of time suppose after one week or two weeks or three weeks thereby we can come to know whether the loss has been increased or the loss has been decreased we are uh, assessing the skin condition where the loss is at the higher level now when you go undergo the treatment the, this loss should be decreased so if it is decreasing that that means it is the line of treatment is actually working but if it is not decreased that means the, whatever treatment regimen you are taking for the prevention of that particular skin condition it is not working well on your system and there should be some other sort of the treatment that should be sought for now trans epidermal water loss measurements can be seen as an indirect measure of skin permeability why do we say permeability here is because again it is the loss of the fluid taking place inside the skin to the outside so it's related to the permeability it is not measured directly but inferred from measuring the change of the water vapor density at the skin surface compared with a point farther away from the skin so change in the water vapor density is the actual thing which is measured the gradient is actually measured now humidity gradient above the skin surface that is proportional to the stratum corneum water loss now it is stated in terms of water per square meter per hour it is against per unit time 
it can be measured using an open chamber device unventilated chamber device or condensing chamber device because of the sensitivity and variability in the measurements of trans epidermal water loss surely three or more readings are taken to calculate a mean value so there are three types of the devices which i have told you first is the open chamber device as the uh, name indicates it's open chamber from both the sides unventilated closed from one side and condensing chamber whereby the water vapor gradient is being condensed at the same time so it is in the advanced version for the unventilated type now when you are assessing at any particular moment you need to take at least three readings and calculate the mean out of that now the when the skin very important when the skin has been treated by this cosmetic and pharmaceutical products the skin secretion processes are hindered to a greater or lesser extent now active agents that penetrate the skin results in an additional loss of the pressure so hindering the trans epidermal water loss results in a swelling of the horny layer skins the sensation that you feel after having worn rubber gloves for an extended amount of a time so it is actually the there is a loss of the pressure which is resulting in in a swelling of the horny skin layer you must have seen when you wear the gloves after some time you feel like suffocating yourself so this is the feeling this is the change in the a change in actually uh, trans epidermal water loss values which is resulting in the swelling of the skin layers you must have seen the hands get swell the skin conditions is different after you wear the rubber gloves for a prolonged period of the now this is the equipment which i was talking about you must you can see you can place the skin over here skin or the part body part then these are the sensors and in the probe which are actually measuring along with the thermometer part so the microclimate is determined by the two moisture sensors these are the sensors along with the thermometer positioned in a measuring head this is the open chamber system it measures the water vapor flow the density okay per unit area per unit time now each of these two sensors measures the partial pressure of the water vapor and they actually measures the gradient between the two sensors which is directly proportional to the rate of evaporation okay so uh, water vapor density water vapor gradient is being measured by these two probes sensors and uh, it is then computed through digital parameter on the monitor of the skin now you need to take at least three values to calculate the mean out of that so open chamber device is a hollow cylinder which is placed in contact with the skin and water vapor diffuses through the open chamber specially separated temperature and relative humidity sensors detect the humidity gradient now unventilated chamber uh, trans epidermal water loss devices like the upper end of the chamber is closed and resulting in a water vapor collecting in the chamber the temperature and the relative humidity sensors detect the rate of increase of relative humidity so what happens in the case of in the case of unventilated chamber is that the one side is actually closed so what happens the uh, uh, water vapors gets accumulated in that particular chamber and the relative humidity sen sensors are actually able to detect the increase of the relative humidity third is the condenser chamber a device now what happens on the in the previous unventilated time the chamber was, was closed from one side now above this chamber is a chamber is being created whereby there is a condenser which is additionally placed so apart from that those two sensors additional element known as condenser is being placed which actually condenses the water vapor which have been collected from the chamber enabling continuous uh, computation of the results now there are certain factors which affect this trans epidermal water loss let us try to understand the certain factors skin care practices also affects trans epidermal water loss now skin, what do we mean by the skin care practices like some people are more exposed to detergents or like their lifestyle is like that they they are actually using or getting assessment of these chemicals more so these agents like sodium lauryl sulfate can damage the skin barrier properties and leads to the increased trans epidermal water loss or increased uh, permeability of the or loss of the body fluids whereas emollients transiently occlude the skin and decreases trans epidermal water loss we are applying a lot of emollient lot of skin creams on the which are actually improving the skin condition so what happens when we have apply such kind of the creams they actually occlude the surface preventing this trans epidermal water loss 
So I think I am I I hope I am clear that we need to prevent the transepidermal water loss for maintaining the skin conditions. We apply certain regimens, certain treatments, certain cosmetic cream, creams to heal up the various skin condition like contact dermatitis or like psoriasis. Uh, so when we apply the treatment we are actually assessing whether the water loss has been prevented or not because during those conditions the water vapor is permeating more so the your TEWL para parameter transepidermal water pa loss parameter should be decreased as your treatment continues so skin surface temperature and sweating additionally alters the transepidermal water loss Studies have also been found that seasonal variations in uh, transdermal epidermal water loss uh, and that 12 is affected by the circadian rhythm and sun exposure. Suppose a person is exposed to the sun most of the period of the time, like more period of time, 10 to 12 hours, like guards. So their skin is different. Their skin has been hampered. So in, in, in that cases, transdermal epidermal water loss is more. 12 parameter will be at a higher site. Now, it has been found that 12 has been shown to vary significantly at different anatomical sites within an individual. Yeah, that's true. 12 is high at the palms, soles, axillae, and forehead, and low at the calf and forearm because of that, uh, you can say variation of the lipid content in these uh, areas. So, the increased well at sites such as the palms and soles is linked to the low sebaceous lipid content at these sites. Now, regional differences in 12 may also be due to differences in, in the sweat gland activity, occlusion, skin temperature, thickness, and microvasculature, as well as the corneocyte size, maturity, and shedding. Now, skin conditions throughout the year also get varied. Also, with the advancing age, the skin becomes more dry. Like uh, so, the as as the condition as the skin gets affected so is this parameter so like as you age on this parameter actually increases so you need to apply more for the emollients more for the screen creams because you are somewhere trying to uh, uh, improve the skin conditions the corneocytes inside your skin gets more and they uh, actually occlude and prevent the water loss from the uh, skin surface Thank you so much for watching my video. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel Pharmacypedia. Happy learning. Please do comment in the comment box. Thank you so much.